when I come into the studio, I kind of need the stillness to let go of a lot of all kinds of things that have been going on outside and inside my life. And the stillness actually gives me energy. My mother, uh, when I was very young, uh, encouraged me a lot with painting. Uh, so when I was about, I think I was around eight or ten, uh, she enrolled me in an adult class of painters. And I had a little canvas, and I, it was the first time I really used oils. Uh, my earliest memories um, of the Brooklyn Museum, really, of the Kachinka dolls, uh, they made a huge impression upon me, and also uh, the totem poles and African art. I was very, very influenced by that. But when I went to NYU, I had these incredible instructors like Milton Resnick and George Ortman and Robert Tiemann. And um, they inspired and they also gave the artists um, studios on the top floor of the building. So I had my own studio at NYU. And so it was very liberating, very free. And they would come around and uh, uh, they weren't critiques. It was more about process, how you paint, uh, especially Robert Tiemann. Uh, he would demonstrate how one could put one dab of one color on another and build a surface and change the structure and space in a painting. And this was very, very exciting. Uh, all the artists like jo uh, John Opper, um, uh, Vincenti, uh, would have uh, openings at the galleries. This is the New York Abstract Expressionists. Uh, it was very exciting, and we were the students were included in what they called happenings, which would be early performances. And so we were very involved in that. I had a studio in my house, uh, my home, when uh, my children were small. And I missed the interaction with artists. I was very used to uh, being with artists. And so I sought out uh, a printing group in Huntington. And it was very, uh, I was very fortunate because the master printer, Don Stewart, had just finished Robert Motherwell's portfolio, a la Pintura. Uh, I decided that I should go back to the city and uh, I uh, became part of the Bob Blackburn uh, workshop. Uh, he, did, he wasn't teaching me, uh, I just used the presses there and I was surrounded by, again, wonderful artists like Romy Bearden would come up to print and uh, once William Hayter came from Europe. And then I met June Kelly because she was taking care of uh, the print collection uh, at Robert Blackburn's studio. When I was with Don Stewart and even at Robert Blackburn, I would paint on the plate and then print. And so they were sort of printed paintings more than prints, uh, really. After that, I decided I, I going to go to SVA, uh, and I went to SVA for two summers called Painting in New York, trying to get back to you know the real serious work, where I met uh, Susan Hall and David Reed and some other professors in the summer and I became uh, very friendly with some of the painters at SVA. Uh, and three of us decided we would get a studio in Soho. I was painting, serious painting, but I was adding um, objects to it and I was doing assemblage with the painting. And I was collecting things I found on the streets in Soho and I was attaching them to my paintings, to my abstract paintings. And I did that for a long time. 
I should say, I'm not rooted in, uh, uh, I'm in a different reality when I'm painting, other dimensions. I looked at Lee Bontecu, I loved the, uh, that velvety darkness that she had in the circular sculptures. Uh, I looked at artists like Franz Klein, uh, George uh, Ortman, uh, or artists, uh, abstract artists, and that was the time I was in. Yes, in fact, um, Barry Schwapsky, he called the show Urban Abstraction. He uses that Broadway boogie woogie, yeah. And uh, absolutely, I'm influenced by the city. Well, it's all about music and rhythm. There's color as, as, as rhythm, uh, color as emotion or spirit. So unconsciously, I guess I was influenced by the sign paintings or the other artists. Yeah, and the Italian futurists, I've looked at them a lot. I layer a lot and I have a lot of secrets. And I cover them up in my paint. I usually paint uh, a few paintings at a time. So there's a progression, there's a process. Uh, even if a lot of the paintings uh, don't always pan out the way I want, it doesn't matter at all to me. I just go on to the next one. And then there's always a painting that um, I seem to need to ruin, and so I let it be ruined and overworked and overpainted. Uh, the last show I had at June Kelly was called uh, Assembling Chaos. But now I feel like I need the space, and I need the space in my work as well. It's usually in the moment. Uh, many times I try to do a sketch or take a very successful small painting and make it into a big painting. It doesn't seem to work. I don't usually repeat myself. It may be repeated in the next painting, part of the idea. Well, you can get uh, stuck on doing something that's uh, bringing you a lot of success, and so you try it again. Um, and that's not a good idea in painting, really. Th because you can <laughs> uh, things uh, happen when you're uh, less controlled. Um, you do need to control a lot in painting for it to be successful and to make a, a, the kind of space you want. But if you start controlling too much, uh, then it loses that life, uh, that energy, uh, that the viewer will look at the painting and they're not able to really react to it. Uh, when I went to SVA uh, during the summer, uh, one of the uh, professors was Susan Hall. Susan Hall is a wonderful painter, and she believed in uh, the spirituality of work and that there were tools that one could use before you painted. It sets a different kind of space. You're not retreating from the world, but it changes uh, the atmosphere, and you're able to get in touch with a spiritual part of being a human being, being yourself. 